Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of. I well, just see how I secured my load down. It probably done these before, but probably been a little bit. Plus, now I've got a different. They're both on here, two separate ones. With this old trailer, I've just kind of had to make it work. A little hard to do since the way this thing is made. It's a 15-year-old trailer. It really wasn't made for this, but this is what I ended up with. So, we've got a John Deere 320 backhoe. Then we got a 650 crawler back here, so we'll flip around and show you what we got here. Start out here with the backhoe here. This is that 320. And of course, got to go to Pennsylvania for my deliveries in Maryland. And what do we got to do? We got to chain the extremities of the, the buckets and arms. And you see where we got that over there, over the top. But of course, some people don't realize you can use a plastic edge protector. It kind of protects a little bit better. It doesn't scratch the paint. And believe it or not, as thick as it is on that corner, it actually holds the chain. doesn't allow a lot of damage at all. See, when it comes over the back here, you can see where I put a piece of strap that I, a uh, bad strap, and I just cut it up into pieces. That way it doesn't scuff up that arm. This is the part that makes it really hard with this kind of an older step deck. See where I was able to get that one chained up there. So I had to come all the way down here. This is the part where we tie down up here on the front hooks. I don't like to go, man, I'm just up against the tire. I don't mind that so much, but if it goes to embed or really push the tire, I won't do it. I will either have them back it up or do it a different way. But with this trailer here, if you notice, there's my spool. Well, we got a pocket, a pocket, a pocket, and then nothing. So you don't really have a lot to chain to. So this is the only reason I'll do this. I don't like to, but I run it down here underneath the pocket, all the way around, and back up between them, and then I hook to the rub rail. I don't like to hook to the rub rail. The only reason I did is because I was able to go underneath two pockets to take the stress off that hook. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done it just immediately right here because it's too much pressure on that rub rail. They don't hold a lot. So it's the only reason I've done that. So all the pressure is on the bend right there and on the pocket, not so much there. Well, actually, that's on this one here. And, of course, you can see the bungee wrapping the handle down because this will bounce. And as it bounces, these things will come on flipped open if you're not, if you're not careful. But we'll go on down here, work our way toward the back. And here's our back tie-in. Of course, you know, I use one chain for both sides. Wrap spool, hook up. Got to have that hook pointed up. Then I'll run it through there, then take the excess chain, throw it to the other side. That way, just use one chain. So I have to do two separate ones. Or if you've got short chains, uh, or if you break a chain, don't throw it away. Keep it. Because you might have a short piece, because all you got to do is go from there to there. Use that short chain. I do it. Matter of fact, I've got a couple short chains, and that's kind of what I keep them for. And you got this here. You can't put a strap, and I just had them lay the bucket down, and I went through the hole right here to the bottom to the other side. You know, some people will, you know, level the bucket out over the top of the bucket right there or through there. If I wasn't going to Pennsylvania, I'd put a strap right through there to hold it right there. But since it's Pennsylvania, we got to run chains. Through here. See, this is my two of my short chains right here. If you notice, I've got a hook there on the other side. So all the way down to here. Then wraps around. And you can see here's the end of the chain right here for hooks. And I've done the same thing on the other side of my other short chain. And of course, since the chains are touching, I've got my pad right there so they don't beat each other, dent each other, damage each other. Well, these dozers on this particular model here, it's, it's okay to go to the track. These cracks kind of designed to hold that chain like that. I just don't prefer to go way up. I'll go down here. At least I've got my downward pull, my side pull. Now, being this is a 650, it's not as heavy. If it had been a 750, I would have ran a chain right through that pin right there and down for the for an extra chain, just because they're heavier. We'll go up here toward the back. We notice since this one has the blade on it, I don't get very many with blade. They usually take them off, but this has a little short blade on it. I'll hook right there on the inside of the track and pull it to the outside here. As long as you got it pulling separate directions, those are pulling in. These two are pulling out, but at least they're pulling in the same direction out. 
of course, like I said, since it's Pennsylvania, what do we got to do? Throw a chain over the blade. You'll notice a plastic edge protector. That way it keeps it from damaging my chain because that sharp edge can damage your chain if you're not careful. Back over here, where I'm going to tie down, and you see right there is another piece of strap that I kept. And I've got it up there so that chain's not rubbing up against it and taking the paint off, scuffing it really bad. Wrap the excess chain, put the bungee on it, pull it back, hook it. That way the chain will come off. And here's where the other one pulls. See all the longer chain I needed was that. And then I threw the excess chain over there. One chain for both sides. Comes in handy or if you got short chains. You know, something that's broke off short, and that's all you, that's all the more you needed on these dozers. So it's still 650. Who are on the other side? Is that same concept as the other one? We'll just same way. You can see where we've got this one where I've tied it in here on the spool. I ran it through there on the other side. And here's your tie-in over here. Where I took that excess chain, ran it through, tied it over here, and pulled the chain together. Put my little ratchet on it. Of course, you know, I had to do the same thing over here, running that chain up underneath there and back up here. It's the only way I'll do that. Wrap that because this side bounces. See, it's just barely up against the tire. It's just in between the tread. And then I run up through there. But this is this one in a handbag. Where I've got this one. Run it up. That's how we can do it on these here. It's, you know, they're not real difficult. Actually fairly easy. They don't take too long to do them. So, i say it again. Uh, it comes in handy. Like it. Share it. Comment on it. Tell other people about it. Subscribe to the channel. We'll still keep the videos coming. I've got a lot of other stuff going as well. I've got some uh, face groups going at the same time. So, I'll just keep adding content on this YouTube as I keep it coming. So see you on the next one.